It's hard to say what a drummer is. It's hard to say what percussion is. You've got winds and brass and strings, and then you've got percussion, which is everything else, including the kitchen sink. And much of the everything else makes noise, not tone. So this, this landscape of noise and chaos and openness, it's already a kind of wilderness. And I think that just comes of the, the actual territory of the instruments themselves. It's inherent in the physical, the acoustic nature of percussion. In Inuksuit, the piece is scored for nine to 99 percussionists and is intended to be performed and experienced out of doors. Part of it is, is just, just the natural evolution of my work over years, making pieces that are bigger and bigger sonic landscapes, pieces that have begun to exceed the capacity of enclosed spaces. At a certain point, the music becomes too big for a concert hall. So then you, you, you sort of have no choice but to move outside. Silence um, is really interesting, isn't it? Silence in this piece is full, and it's not dramatic. It's not a grand pause. It's not a dramatic device. It's also an invitation to listen differently, to listen to, oh, that is happening over there. I didn't, I didn't realize it. I think what it speaks to is the, the inseparable relationship between noise and silence. When we regard noise as an, an intrusion, an obviousness, it annoys us. We try to keep it out. But when we welcome noise as something to hear, then suddenly the whole world becomes music. There's a lot of sound in this piece. The idea is that there's always more going on. There's always more than you can hear at any given moment. A visual artist who I admire greatly, Robert Irwin, talks about making pieces that are sight dependent, pieces that relate to the conditions of the sight, wherever the sight may be. So my idea for Inuksuit was to make a piece of music that could be, could be um, a means of exploration. The piece is all about the listener uh, shaping their own experience. And in Inuksuit, everything is written out. All the individual parts, every, every sound that someone plays in the piece is, is written, but exactly when and exactly where and on exactly how individual events relate to one another is, is open to the conditions of the performance site and to the magic of the moment. Each performance is unique, but in some way it's still the piece. It's not a best seat in the house for hearing. It's not intended to, to be experienced from a, a fixed perspective. Listeners wander all over the place throughout the, the landscape of the piece and the landscape of the performance set so that each person is having a singular and unique experience. So how do you evoke or suggest something like that experience with a recording, which by its very nature is fixed. 
The answer is, <laughs> I'm not sure. I was skeptical at first that this piece could be recorded at all. Just mounting a, a live performance of Inuksuit is a huge project. It requires an extraordinary amount of cooperation. Lots of people, lots of instruments, lots of logistics. And then um, to try and record that in addition just adds a whole new layer of challenge and complexity. But this was a nearly ideal situation in a, in a beautiful little bowl in the woods in Vermont with a stream running through the middle of the space and percussionists deployed all around this space and microphones everywhere. I knew we were onto something with this recording when we made it both as a surround sound and a stereo mix. That was a challenge. Where do you place the instruments in the space? How do the relationships between the instruments change over the course of the recording? So there was just a lot of back and forth listening, both in a surround sound studio and in stereo on speakers and headphones. We finally got to, um, to a mix that allowed me to hear different things each time I listened to. And that was when I knew we had it. Thank you.